So, since I am back, you guys are wondering what I'm going to be talking about right now. Well, you see, first of all, I'm not talking about the trip. The trip is kind of con uh, confidential. I will talk to you guys about that in a later video. Thank you. No, instead I'm going to be giving you guys three After Hours review because while I was gone, I actually saw three different films. Two, I was lucky to catch the honest way, the last way, and I don't, I don't really want to talk about it. So, I'm going to start from the one that I remember vividly the most, and then we'll just go on from there. So, let us start off with the first film, Gods of Egypt. Now, for those of you that don't know, I was really hyped about seeing this because this was the first time anyone actually legit tried to make a full-on Egyptian mythology epic. Not like how the Greeks have their epics and stuff with the brilliance of Ray Harryhausen himself. No, no, no. This was just pure, pure travesty in my eyes. How they took a brilliant opportunity and wasted it. Why do I say this? Well, for those of you guys that haven't seen the film, I'm just going to tell you this right now. The film is basically the mythology retelling of the death of Osiris. Was one of the other gods responsible? Yes and no. It's, it's very com complex and convoluted, like all mythology. But the thing about this is they take every single aspect of the myth and then just go full Hollywood on it, which isn't what you do with a mythology epic like this. The death of Osiris and the rise of Horus into the enclave of being the king of the Egyptian gods, that isn't how you do the story, Hollywood. You want to know how they do this? They have it where Set, not the actual villain of Egyptian mythology, that is the giant snake of Kofish. Kofish being the chaotic serpent of the void. He would have been perfect. He would have sold the film. Giant serpent was trying to shift after the death of Osiris. There, done, boom. Have all the gods come together. You would have had a good epic. That would have been a good story. But instead, they were like, since Set is just such this evil bastard, we gotta have him involved. We gotta have him involved because he's just known sometimes as the Egyptian god of chaos fucking wrong okay first of all he wasn't originally the egyptian god of chaos he was just the egyptian god of deserts and storms wanna know how he became chaos it's because everyone f conveniently forgot about the serpent and then just placed it on set because he was the brother of osiris and then they just thought, since the Greeks had their evil families, why don't we just have one evil sibling? And then we had Set getting the shit out of the stake. Do your fucking research, first of all. Because honestly, every single thing they could have done, they could have just gone through all the textures of all Egyptian mythology to find out what the fuck was wrong. They could have actually had everything concrete in their fucking minds. Hello? But no, they just had to be all Hollywood, making it a giant epic that really didn't need to exist. Like the remake of Clash of the Titans, and then Wrath of Titans, the sequel to a sequel that never was supposed to even happen for a reboot, to a reboot that shouldn't have actually existed, as they're also making a third movie to that reboot that never should have existed. It's like the bastard child of Hollywood to my eyes, and I'm not gonna apologize for saying this, but back to Gods of Egypt. The casting choice, yes, I know the controversy of it being racial, how they just whitewashed the majority of the cast. Let me just paint it to you guys like this. I don't care. You want to know why? Because a lot of people forget that Africa has white people. It doesn't just have black people and light brown people and tan people. It has white people. It's not that new. Like, sure, they were a rarity back when society was still getting on and going but white people were still in africa that's not the issue guys do your research like for me this is the only time that the casting is not my issue the issue i have is the story like the cast can be whatever for this one film if they make a sequel of it then i'm gonna have my foot go up the ass but for all intents and purposes 
this is the only time I'm focusing on how bad the story is. For instance, for making Set the villain, they're like, well, let's have him kill Osiris, rip the eyes of a Horus, and then just attack all the gods, just killing them, to then just take pieces of them to make himself into an ultimate deity. That never works in Egyptian mythology, because in order to kill them, their organs would have died too. Ripping out Horus's eyes, they wouldn't have actually still existed. They would have been gone until f slow regeneration. And I mean super slow. I mean slower than Deadpool when he first found out about his powers kind of slow. Like, an eye for Horus trying to regenerate would take about, I would say, 1,500 million human lives of living, honestly, combined to just restore one eye halfway. They wouldn't have existed. That is automatically fucked up with your story. Also, trying to make sure that the Sphinx's riddle is not uh, what is man? Two legs in... Four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, three legs at night. Everyone knows the riddle. That would have been a cinch for the film to just kind of muck over the Sphinx, okay? That's what it's known for. That one myth. Not improvising about what is water. About it existed, it's supposed to hell, and blah, 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 blah. movie goers, I honestly implore you, make filmmakers smarter, please. Because I have no fucking chill anymore with this shit. Okay, second issue I have with that after the organ thing, as I move this comic out of the way that I got in the mail while I was away. Second problem I have is... For all intents and purposes, um, one key factor when it comes to the creatures that come in the series, um, when we had the Egyptian deities living amongst humans, they didn't turn into metalized abominations of nature. They had animalistic heads with human bodies while they stood at, and I'm not fucking kidding, at 32 motherfucking feet tall. 32 motherfucking feet tall. I am honestly not bullshitting you when I say this. Like, if Horus were to transform, he would just have a, hawk, a falcon's head with wings with the same fleshy body. Like, this kind of flesh sort of body, not full-on armor to just portray him as holier than thou because he accessed metal before humanity actually decided to make gold-plated armor in a more successful fashion. That's not smart, that's fucking dumb. And the only time they actually almost got it halfway right was when they had the actor of the actor was playing Raw actually go on to ascending into full-on height but just being covered up in fire instead of having the animal head. You don't actually have a halfway decent idea and then fuck up. That's not how we do things, guys. Like, I'm an aspiring filmmaker. I honestly just study these films in order to make sure everything is in detail. And yet, all I saw throughout this whole film was inconsistencies. Honest to God, horrible direction, and awful script writing. And that's not to say that I hated the cast. I honestly like the cast. They also captured how I also thought that Thoth, the Egyptian god of wisdom, mathematics, astrology, scientific analysis, was an annoying little shit. You read any myth that he's in, he is annoying. He's an all all He's an asshole. Done. You captured that perfectly. And I don't even give a fuck. But the thing is, the writing for a lot of the shit was just repetitively stupid. What is the main focus of the movie? You have a mortal, played by Brendan Thallis, for those of you like me that remember him from Australia days where he was on the show Slide. I've been following his process since then. Holla at you, boy. I've been doing good on my research. Woo, woo. This motherfucker decides to have the whole story circled around him, 
to get his love interest named Zia, or Zaya, how you fucking pronounce it. And it just goes into an Orpheus sort of appeal, but with a good ending twist. So, this is the only thing, though. You have Set as the antagonist for Horus. You have Death as the antagonist for Mortals. Which, in all honesty, would basically be saying you had an idea for an Orpheus myth sort of story, but you decided to incorporate Egyptian mythology in the background because you had nothing else better to do. Because, um, if there was going to be a story about Orpheus trying to go to the land of the dead to get his love interest back because of circumstance involving deities, just fucking do it! I mean, there has been many interpretations of Orpheus, even Black Orpheus in South America, in Rio de Janeiro, of Orfeo and Eurydice, which was honestly one of my favorite films to just study because of how brilliant it was and how it encapsulated the time frame of it in a realistic sense with, honest to God, Black Magic in South America. That shit honestly hit me right here. But... When you have a story like this, where you have an Orpheus narrative mixed with Egyptian mythology that has no bearing on merging Greek with Egyptian, you just have fucking shit. And I'm not even going to apologize for that, because honestly, the director, Alex Poreas, you had every opportunity to make this into a brilliant, smart, intellectually profound film for those that actually want to make a mythology based movie and yet you fucking wasted it with a hearty not even focused narrative to the point that I'm just like are you fucking high or just plain stupid I mean for real I am just studying your shit I am honestly honest to god just studying your camera work from the freeze frame to how you get the characters going like, Woo! and all I'm thinking to myself is this is a stupid motherfucker how the hell are you going to lose focus on a film that you are directing for, like, I don't know, 14 billion motherfucking dollars? I mean, for real, dawg. You have Summit Entertainment and some other indie film people that are giving you, like, millions upon billions of dollars, and you're just fucking up. What the hell is your problem? Are you just high? Do you have a lot of cocaine up your nose? Do you honestly just have to spend all this on some prostitutes and hookers to blow you until you have a, a coherent script on your mind? What is your deal, son? What is your deal? Because, honestly, if this is your direct directorial debut, this was a shitty one. Because, here, here's the, just work with me on this. Comparing this to, I'm going to be generous, of the religious film Exodus. Because you guys know me, I don't touch the religion topic on this channel. For reasons I can't go into, because we don't touch that topic a lot. Exodus. Where it had the backlash of whitewashing the cast by having Christian Bale playing as Moses. That actually focused on the plot more than Gods of Egypt. You, you can honestly eliminate the cast inconsistencies with color. And yet Exodus still beats out Gods of Egypt with coherent plot. Even that, I'll even go a step further. Noah. Fucking Noah. Where... Christians alike all over the world. Not saying I am, not saying I'm not. Just just stop trying to overanalyze this. Christians all over the fucking world are just looking at Noah like, Are you stupid? Did you pop a molly and start sweating when you start writing this shit? What is your deal? They would say that that was more coherent than gods of Egypt. And they honestly would just say... For paganistic portrayal on the on the big screen, this was actually pure shit compared to Noah and Exodus. Like honestly, Alex, Proyas, step up your fucking shit next time. Cause honestly, this is the most animated I've ever been for an after hours review, and hopefully will be the last time I'm ever this fucking animated. Stop with the shit. For honesty, to God, for what I'm gonna talk about. For the rest of my life is how honestly to god the 10 bucks i wasted on this film so on a scale of 0 to 13 when it comes to gods of egypt i give this honking piece of shit a two a solid droopy homeless covered two out of fucking 13 wanna know why because cast inconsistency with acting chops 
cast inconsistency for script writing, director inconsistency for good narration. But the only reason it's ever getting a two is the fact that it was laughably enjoyable. It can be so bad it's good and actually get a cult following. And I would touch that when the DVD comes out if people are like, it had a cult following for being a piece of shit, like The Room, for instance. But for all intents and purposes, I would never tell anyone, sit through this two hour, not accounting the credits, obviously, but two hour and ten minute shit fest. If you are a fan of Egyptian mythology, if you're an action nut, go ahead and see this. I don't give a fuck about you. You just watch whatever you want to waste your money on horrible films that Hollywood just peddle in your fucking face because you got nothing else better to do. Me, I'm just going to keep it real because now we got two more films to talk about. So I'll see you guys in the next ones. Peace, babies.